I play all day. I cannot stop. I can think of nothing but rook, pawn, bishop, knight, A, B, C, mate. Stefan Zweig was not just a great writer. He was this kind of Renaissance man during the period. And when he found that world being destroyed by fascism, uh, he was crushed. I found the story compelling and his personal life uh, really rich uh, and talking about times that I find very interesting. In the show, I play one, two, three, four main characters and then maybe another dozen all smaller characters. And it's enormous fun. <laughs> it takes place on an ocean liner in 1942, going from New York to Buenos Aires. And there's a chess match going on between a young man and the greatest chess player in the world. Someone appears out of nowhere and starts helping the young man. No! Not the queen. But no! Suicide. <laughs> wow! Twice in a row! Now, force an exchange, an exchange at all costs. Then you can draw. God himself cannot help him. Draw. So this mysterious man is then challenged to play the greatest chess player in the world. But before that next day, when the challenge happens, the mysterious man, who is called Dr. B, is convinced to tell the young man the story of his recent life. Now, I was a special case for the Nazis. I was not some poor, nameless, unfortunate, doomed to annihilation in the death camps. No, no, no. I was someone special. They thought I knew things, secrets, information, people, money. And so the Nazis don't want to just kill him. They want to get information from him. And they do this by putting him in solitary confinement, where he slowly loses grip on reality. When he's on the brink of losing it completely, he steals a book that's in the pocket of a coat. Look what I have! <laughs> <laughs> the bed, the chair, the table, the wash basin, the window. I have a book! <laughs> it turns out to be a book of master chess games. Yes. Yes. New game. New game. No, I'm playing chess! <laughs> the next five days, press on it twice. <laughs> We let it wait more days. No more crumbs of bread. There is built to me as ever as a wash basin. For another eight days, no more chess board. So halfway through the show, uh, this character rises from the audience. He is a phenomenon, yes, but not in a way you would expect. His name is Laszlo, Laszlo Kohler. And he takes control of the telling of the story of the play so as to do a biography of Mirko Centrovic, the greatest chess player in the world. Checkmate! 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 You must understand, this is sleeping in the Hungarian village. This sort of thing just doesn't happen. It was decided he'd be put up in a hotel the next day. All the finest players in the room be summoned. He slays them all. He's less impressed with his games than with water closet, the first time of which he ever saw them. <laughs> By the time he is 17, he's Hungarian champion. By the time he is 21, he's champion of the world. I've beaten them all. Yeah. All his infinite superior intellect, imagination, and daring. I, I, I beat them all. No more laughter. His whole life, the victim of ridicule. It is not long before he responds to the siren's call of national socialism. Sigal! Sigal! Climax of the play is the final showdown between Dr. B and the greatest chess player in the world, Mirko Centrovic. Hey, Gentlebrook, I'm ordered. <sighs> hey, little. <clears throat> I give him advantage for a while. See if he shows me his soul. <clears throat> Excuse me, doctor. What? Is your move. No, it isn't! Ah, yes. <clears throat> well, who wins? Well, in fact, who cares? Just the people who give the illusion weight and 
importance. And I try to make parallels between that and us going to the theater. It's just this elaborate game we agree to play. The, the actors are like the game masters. I'm going to cut past this scene, OK? Where I convince them to play the game. It's kind of long, and I, I never liked it that much. Is that OK with you? Yeah, I never liked it that much. You <laughs> clearly can tell John what the play is about, right? Just in your own words. Go ahead. Chess. That's right. <laughs> 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 I'm really sorry for this ending. So this is where we live, in this delicious, rich nothingness that we create. Illusion is something that is essential to us. The doctor creates this illusion of a chess game so he can survive. I'm hoping to get the audience to think about how they live, how they go to theater, how they decide how to live another day.